I've been receiving tons of emails on how to achieve realistic scenes and characters in Blender. At a point, I thought they were spams because all the messages almost read the same. Others sent me screenshots of their works and that was how I got to know what the main issue was. It had nothing to do with the Blender software. Now this overlooked process is a major part in 3D animation and most people don't pay attention to it. And that is lighting. Look, I don't care the kind of software you use. If your lighting is poor, your works wouldn't get the quality in looks and feel you are looking for. It doesn't matter how well you sculpt, how many polygons you get into a particular model to make it look real, or how well you UV unwrapped and textured. If the lighting is poor, dude, your work will still look like crap. As a digital artist, I do a lot of diggings into digital techniques for everything I do. However, it is critically important to use real world examples and to study how these virtual renderings are achieved in real life in order to perfect the digital technique. Many people think all 3D artists have to do in a digital scene is drop a couple of lights into a scene or just turn on the lights that are in the shot and boom, they're done. No, there is much more involved than just dropping light into a scene. We have to understand on a deep level how real world light interacts and reacts in different situations. We have to study the play of light on a surface, how light will interact with different materials, the type of qualities a light takes in different situations, also how the color of the light affects the scene. Without knowledge of these things, any 3D work we do would be unrealistic. Check out this video from Michael Tanzilo and what he had to say about lighting in 3D animation. Uh, and a lot of it is that I was so focused on learning all the technical software when I was first getting started. Um, I was so focused on learning the computer programs and how to do this and how to click the right buttons. And I always thought that there was like some magical button that the film creators made, that animation, the people in animated films like could hit to make their stuff look so beautiful and that I just didn't know where that button was and I didn't know where that menu was in the software. And really it's just a matter of understanding how to make images look a certain way and they like industry professionals don't have any uh, access to additional equipment that an amateur doesn't have they just have the experience with it so it's teaching students how to look at their images analyze them in a way that, uh, that's going to help you improve them and go through the process of iterating and getting better there's three things that we there's three things that I always focus on when I'm when I'm working on a project or when I'm working on a shot the first is to create mood for the image so whenever the uh, or, or anything to help emphasize the story. Again, if it's scary, romantic, whatever's going on. So crafting it in a way that helps tell the story. And then there's, uh, we like to create visual shaping, so light and dark fall off areas. So there'll be a bright side of my face and a darker side of my face and making sure that all the characters and all the objects in the scene have that. And then the, uh, the third one is getting the character to read off of the background, either a bright character over a dark background, a warm character after cooler toned backgrounds. It's those three things that people struggle with the most. Is Nobody cares if you have a master's degree if you can't actually make something look good. For me, it was important that I, that I got an education in art, um, that I have an understanding of design and composition and all that, that good stuff. And for me, I, I worked out really well for me to do that through uh, traditional school. Do you need that? Absolutely not. If it was me coming up, again, I would tell people to focus on learning design, learning artistic composition, uh, learn color theory, learn how to do more traditional art forms of painting, photography, drawing, just get those basic art skills and that will really help you in the long run. Thanks, Michael. Keep up the good work. Look, bagging 10 subscribers each week is the only thing that keeps me motivated to be running these videos and I really appreciate all those showing me that love kindly hit the sub button and like if you've loved the video so far now lighting is difficult depending on the type of scene you are working on but i wouldn't really consider lighting to be the most difficult task in 3d animation i would rather count it as one of the most important yet challenging aspect of 3d animation for one lighting in itself requires a lot of programming math science and yeah this is because the 3d artist has to know how light would react with the surface of an object example how an object interacts with a pool ball is different as compared to how an object would react to a tennis ball another aspect of lighting is rendering 
Rendering is the process of generating the computer image by looking at each pixel individually. Now, the rendering aspect requires programming along with vector and calculus mathematics. And for this reason, lighting should be strongly looked at during the rendering process. You have to understand how real world light interacts and reacts in different situations. You have to study the play of light on a surface, how light will interact with different materials, what qualities the light takes in different situations, how the color of the light affects the scene. And doing all these are just the tip of the iceberg. Without knowledge of these things, any 3D work you do will be unrealistic due to poor lighting technique. It can be very matte heavy the more you get into it. If your final rendering still sucks after a very good lighting, kindly take a critical look at your render engine settings. Very important. I actually decided to end the video, but then I thought the video wouldn't be complete without talking about the six things to consider when lighting a scene. Number one will be establishing a setting. Establishing a setting is how lighting artists show where and when the story takes place. It can be divided into time and day, the weather, location, and even story. Story is the overall concept that the light should help drive the story through the environment. Number two is going to be enhancing or creating the mood. Now, this is the process where lighters would play with the audience's emotions directly. We can further divide this into visual attention, color and emotion, and revealing actions or characters. This can be very complicated and uses a number of different techniques to achieve the mood the artists are going for. Number three is going to be directing the eye. Now, this uses a lot of visual trickery and often includes many elements such as staging and um, composition in addition to lighting. But what better way to tell the audience who to look at in a crowd of people than to shine a spotlight on them? Number four is creating the illusion of depth, volume, and revealing substance. Now, this is a situation where all parts of how lighting can create the illusion of dimension is taken into consideration. Film is a flat 2D medium, so lighting has to be used to create the illusion that it has a third dimension to it. Along with other techniques, lighting can also be used to showcase the different qualities of the surface of, a, of an object, which is typically something digital artists need to worry with more than real world lighting designers. Number five is going to be maintaining continuity and integrating elements. Now, integrating elements and maintaining continuity are both part of how to provide and enhance cohesiveness to a story. Often, digital elements in a film will look out of place or one shot will seem off in a sequence of shots. This is where good lighting can come in and blend these elements and shots together, making the scene or sequence um, of a scene feel more as if they belong together. Number seven is going to be setting visual style and creating visual interest. Now, this is all about creating the aesthetics of a film. Some films have iconic lighting, such as Sin City or Tron Legacy, while others use established techniques and styles, such as film noir. A director, cinematographer, or director of photography can have a specific style of lighting that defines their career. A typical example will be Christopher Nolan or Steven Spielberg. These are two directors that any time I see a movie on the screen, I know they are the ones behind it simply because of their lightning style. Okay, if you love the video, kindly don't forget to give me a sub. Peace out.